Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So, um, this is Coach Carlin Cole. Hope everybody's doing well this morning. I'm up a little bit early, usually about, I don't know, it varies. I got up kind of late today. I get up about, you know, three between three and five, but I let myself sleep in today. So I got up about six, so it's kind of different for me. Um, but I wanted to uh, smile and sit this morning and talk a little bit about sexual confidence. One of the powers that we hold is our sexual energy. Being as it may, our sexual energy is very, very um, amazing. And um, sexual energy is the energy that you use to create. So um, if you are limited in understanding sex, a lot of times you're limited in understanding what sex, sex, sexual energy does for you. Um, and so I think it's important that we understand that sexual energy is really a powerful energy. Um, one of the things that I see a lot of times that people, um, I wouldn't just say if this is a male or female thing, this could just be period. People struggle with having sexual confidence, with really understanding the power they hold when intimate, what it does for them and what it does for the other person that they're having sex with. Um, and I think it's imperative that we understand the connection is uh, powerful. Now, also understanding that when we engage in intimacy or, you know, we, we really have a strong understanding of sex, we start to realize that there's a plethora of things <laughs> that we have to be mindful of. And one of those majors in this is that when you are sexually confident, you're going to draw many people that want to be in that space with you because you have a confidence and that confidence means that you're pretty assured that whomever that you're sharing that space with is going to have a wonderful, amazing, without a shadow of a doubt, powerful experience. And so with that said, you know, you have this, you have this confidence about you and in that people want to, want to share with you in that space. So here's something that I think is very important that we need to be mindful of. Those who have sexual confidence, you want to remember that, um, your confidence comes from your awareness, your self-awareness. You're well aware that you deliver in this in this space because you know a lot about energy. You know a lot about creativity. You're probably very artsy. You're eccentric. You know you you have a a, a very strong um, you know essence to you. And so, with that said, all of those things are a draw. So when, when people are drawn to you in your essence and in your, your sexy and they're drawn to your confidence, they're going to want to be in that sexual space with you. Here's the thing, though, for those of you that are sexually confident, you want to remember that um, you cannot discount feelings. <laughs> so there are certain things you need to have in place when you are sharing that space with someone. Because if you're not careful, you can have a person that wants to become possessive 
wants to become very jealous of your sexual confidence. And once someone experiences this, this amazing experience with you sexually, they're going to want to um, not share you. It's just what it is. They're not going to want to share you. They're going to want to keep you for themselves. And that's not always the case because you may be just, you know, in your own freedom. But I think it's imperative that you understand yourself so that you are aware that having your own confidence in you, you should not hold that back because it just is what it is. Um, you also people that are confident you also have um to put in place certain things that allows you to flow in that sexual confidence without feeling like you know you can't really expand yourself into just being who you are because a lot of people that have this confidence they have a tendency to be like well Maybe I shouldn't, you know, maybe I should just be a little bit more laid back and not be who I am. So they hold back who they are. And in doing that, it really makes it difficult for you to really become your higher self. Here's the thing. Sexual energy is very powerful because it is an energy, like I said earlier, to help you to create. So whenever you are very sexually confident, that means you have done some understanding. Well, you've done some research on yourself. You've learned some things through your own sexual experience. I think that it's imperative that you have many experiences so that you can understand yourself, not necessarily just to be out here just with, with several for no reason, but to learn some things about you. You realize that as you grow, as you advance, as you expand in this life, you're going to realize that the more confident you are in your sexual self, the more you will gain a higher understanding of who you are. You will also be able to advance in, in certain things you're trying to do on the planet when you are aware of your sexual self. It's very important. And then not to mention, there are cons, like I said before, because many people don't want to don't want to share you once they have this, you know, once they have that experience with you, they want to kind of keep you um, in the realm with them. And I get it. It's a challenge for you. But here's what you have to realize, because you understand that your sexual confidence is is it is highly going to be attractive to others you have to be willing to sit down and be honest with you and figure out what since you have this confidence how are you going to allow that confidence to help you to advance in this life in your solid sacred power because it's a power, mind you, understand that. When you have this power, you gotta realize that power you got is something that is essential for you to get to the higher self. It's just what it is. Now, here's another thing that I wanna share about sexual confidence. You also advance in your sexual confidence when you study the power of sex. We cannot assume that just because we've had sex, we're doing it well. <laughs> we can't say, well, we've had, you know, great experiences sexually doesn't necessarily mean you're a great lover. It just maybe means that you've been with one that knows your flow and is down with it, but it doesn't mean that you really know much about your sexual self. You have to learn some things about you to where you are understanding, okay, where, where I'm at right here, is great, but let me do some studying on how I can become more orgasmic. How can I become more attuned? How can I be more present when I am sexual? How can I help the other person to find their beauty in themselves? You know, when you're making love to someone, 
you're supposed to be showing them showing them who they are showing them how beautiful they are and they're supposed to be doing the same for you it comes from a very selfless space but again as you build your own sexual confidence you realize that okay in my own sexual sexual conflict conf, conquest i realize that the men or the man may be like wow i feel like i'm at the top of the world so if that's the case that means that as a woman i am bringing him to feeling that but that comes from a selfless space i can't be in here just trying to prove what i am and how great i am it has to be selfless and a lot of times we're so caught up in what we're doing and how we're doing it and how great we are at it that we're missing the whole point of why intimacy is so powerful. Sexual connection is important when you sit back and look at it and you realize I can have a very strong connection with someone and not be all caught up in how it's being done, but rather bringing them to a newfound sense of themselves, finding themselves more um, confident in themselves because you have confidence what you are is contagious to the person you're making love to it's contagious i'm talking about your being when you have a confidence in yourself when you when you're showing them that you are not holding back on any on any layer of what you're delivering sexually you'll find out that that person is going to be like wow this is amazing and i'm really in appreciation of this and how can I get there for you? And then you'll find out that these lovers are going to be more in, engaged and more excited about being intimate. So again, I'm going to get off of here, but I wanted to just be honest with you. It's, it's imperative that you realize that sexual confidence is powerful. Sexual confidence is enjoyable. Sexual confidence can bring you to another amazing space to where you're seeing yourself be like wow i didn't even know i could take my lover to this level i didn't realize i could be you know renewed because of me being who i am so as we as we get to the as we get to this newfound level of beauty in our intimacy we will find, hey, Allison, we will find that sexual confidence brings us to a newfound awareness of ourself. So when we're intimate and when we are making love to the person we are with, we find out that when we are more selfless, we are going to get more vulnerable. Here's the thing, and I want to bring this up real quick. Vulnerability is one of the greatest most beautiful energies that you can be during intimacy vulnerability to be vulnerable to, to to be who you are in your nakedness in your flaws i'm not talking about just physically but in your flaws and who you are you can be really vulnerable to them and and in your vulnerability that is submission but the submission isn't like I'm, I, you know, you're, you're taking over me, but the submission is I'm submitting to you my vulnerability. I'm submitting to you what I am and who I am in my own flaws. And in this, in this exchange of sexual energy, you and I can be in a space where I can feel more power. And then you can feel the power as well. You're feeling a power when you are intimate. You are feeling power when you are engaged sexually. But the pros are the more confident you are during sex, the more power you're going to get in exchange in return. So here's the thing. Don't hold back your power. Don't hold back your confidence because your confidence is something that is a draw. You're going to get more people at you the more confident you are sexually, the more excited you are about being who you are in a sensual space the higher you're going to feel in that space sexually with the, with that person. So we don't want to hold back being who we are in our sexual space. We have to be confident because when we are, we find ourselves like, okay, you know what? 
I'm receiving more from, from the lover I'm with because he or she knows that I am not hesitant about being confident in what I'm going to deliver in this intimate space with you. See, and another thing too, when we're intimate, there comes a point when we're getting a high from it. If we are with a lover that knows what they're doing. <laughs> but sometimes we don't even need that. Sometimes we can just be caught up in the essence of it. Because sometimes we can be like engaging and sexual with someone. And it doesn't even have to be about what they're doing to take us to that next higher climatic space. But sometimes we just want to feel appreciated. Feel that we are really being engulfed in our beauty and how we are so appreciated. And and then again, when you are in a sexual space with someone, you can you can really let yourself go. Here's the thing, especially for ladies, the ones that are holding back being orgasmic because they don't want to. I'm afraid that if I have an orgasm, I'm going to get emotionally all over the place. Have that orgasm and learn to enjoy the pleasure of it. When you have an orgasm, you'll find out that that is a very beautiful place to be. Now, here's the thing. If you are not emotionally stable, yes, you can find yourself all over the place because you are not being grounded and masterful of how you handle yourself. Sex will bring out some very strong feelings. I'm talking about feelings that maybe you've never had before. And, and so we have to be mindful that we got to get our emotional self in place and grounded before we go into these orgasmic, euphoric, amazing experiences. Because what happens is we're going to find ourselves all over the place emotionally and we're going to be a basket case. Here's why so many people jump in, in into the pool of abstinence because they're afraid of bringing their sexual confidence out. They're afraid of being intimate with someone because they're afraid that if I feel amazing and orgasmic and climaxes back to back to back, I don't know how I would be able to handle that. That means you're not sexually confident. When you're sexually confident, you don't fear orgasms. You don't fear, you don't fear Feeling pleasure from someone? You don't. Because you understand that in that pleasurable space, you become more creative. You become more artistic. You become more dynamic in who you are. You have a huge understanding of your amazing enlightenment and self-awareness. This is why so many people deep dive into these abstinence phases of their lives and they're not having any type of sexual pleasure. And they're wondering why they're miserable. Well, you're miserable because you're holding back. Enjoying the number one thing you've been. It's a God-given gift to be able to be intimate. So it doesn't make any sense to hold back being intimate. And, and then being orgasmic at the same time. This is one of the powers and pros of being sexually confident. When you're sexually confident, you don't hold back with enjoying what you are going to experience and then surprise me i don't know what i might experience with you we don't know even if you're a lover i've been with several times we don't know the next time the next the next one we have together we don't know where we're gonna go we have no idea we might think we know but we have no clue that even if i've been your partner for decades or years on end if we get into this space, I don't know what we're going to experience. It might blow our mind and it might be something I've never had before. And in that, that means that I'm going to come to a newfound space of awareness in me. But again, a lot of people are hesitant to be orgasmic. They don't, they don't know what to do with it. They're afraid of it. And the fear of being afraid of being orgasmic or having a climax or having, you know, just yourself being free in that space, you're holding back getting to your higher self. Sexual energy isn't just about creating children. 
Sexual energy is about creating a newfound understanding of you. When you create your power, you're not living to die. You're dying to live. When we really deep dive and learn about ourselves sexually, we start to realize like, damn, I'm a, ooh, I didn't know I could write poetry. Hell, I didn't know I could do this. Or I didn't know I could be, a, a, you know, appreciated by different people. I didn't know people would love me because I, I didn't know. Well, that's because we, we, it, we take away from our self growth when we're not diving into our sexual, as, as, as Miss Adrian says, we don't die, deep dive into our sexual magic. We have to, and we have to realize that there's a power that we're not diving into. And when you hold back because you're afraid of it, you're terrified. Oh, I don't know what to do. You know, come on. We can't, we cannot continue to be afraid of being sexual. You're not doing enough research on understanding what sex is and what sex does for you and your life. When you hold back, that means you're not aware. And when you're not self-aware, you're really making decisions on what you think you know. Start really doing some research on what sex is. Seriously. Like, sit down. Really start to study it. Pay attention. Engage. Have a man or a woman touch you and see what that feels like. When we don't have it for a long time, when we're not touched for a long period of time, then guess what happens? We start to have touch starvation. We start to have feelings of, man, I can't, I just can't be moved because I don't know what I don't know. But again, sit down and realize that when you sit back and you start to feel someone really, really give a damn about you and you're starting to be moved sexually, you'll start to realize there's a part of you that you're cutting off when you're cutting off being intimate with someone. I mean, I don't know how many people that, you know, that, that have not been touched. I do energy body work. You know, if you haven't noticed, <laughs> I'm sure you have, but I do energy body work. And many of the men that I work on are not being sexually touched. So I am actually helping them to, you know, get to that space of just being able to be free. Here's the thing. When they're not being sexually touched and, and it just, it's over time, it's just absent of no touch at all. What happens is our bodies get desensitized, but our bodies are also starving starving and so once you start to receive the touch again you start to realize damn i forgot how good this feels you will have memory loss of how good sex is when you don't have it when you don't allow someone to touch you and 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 caress you and make you feel amazing you will find out like damn i thought that i was um <laughs> Okay, but now I'm not really receiving touch. So now I'm feeling uncomfortable. I, I didn't know that I was really in a deficiency here in, 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 in physical touch. Well, when you don't have physical touch and you have it for, I'm talking about absence of it for, for years on end, you start to realize there's a, there's a, there's a huge lack in your creative, in your creativity. Real talk. You're not going to be as creative. I'm just here to let you know that because sexual energy is what you need to be creative. Point blank period. So for those of you that have lost a lover or have lost someone, you haven't been really in a relationship since that your lover left you or you left them or you're no longer together or they passed on or whatever it happened. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. How long are you going to go without being touched? Because when you start to hold back, you being touched on, you start to realize like, damn, I thought that I was okay, but you're not, you're not okay when you're not, when you're not being touched on and, and we have to, as human beings, realize that touch is essential for us. There was a woman that did a, a hug parlor. And she was just hugging 
And primarily, she was a woman, so she was hugging on men that had not been hugged for years. And she said the men were collapsing in her arms. These men were collapsing in her arms. I'm talking about a hug parlor. He was just, she was just hugging the men, hugging them. That's it. Nothing else. When she said those men were collapsing in her arms, that's because those men forgot what it felt like to be embraced. I'm talking about just embraced, not, not even rubbed down or loved on or touched and licked on or sucked on. These men didn't get none of that. They just got an embrace, a hug from her. And they collapsed in her arms. When we don't go to the next level of understanding, when we have a deficiency in our physical touch with someone, we start to lose our radiance. We do. We start losing our radiance. We start losing how we feel about ourselves. We don't have self-confidence. People aren't going to draw into you. They're just going to be like, oh, hi, and you're just going to blend into the atmosphere. Well, Kevin, what I'm saying is when you are not being touched, and I don't know if you if hugging feels strange to you because <laughs> of, you know, your own past, you know, situations that you may not have um, touched on in your life. But it is so important to be able to feel cared about. Hugging um sexing uh caressing all of those different types and even energy body work what i do all of these different stages of touch are expressions of physical ways to show you how you're being cared for that's all it is especially if you're being hugged and the person really cares about you that's an expression that's a physical expression so if you if you are, or if you have never had that, you wouldn't understand what it feels like to be embraced by somebody that gives a damn about just you and making you feel amazing. It's not easy out here to not understand that. I've got many clients that I might just coach and I don't even do energy body work on them because they, they, they got some work to do on dealing with me even physically touching them because they have some stuff that's going on that, that that touch is not something they're okay with so they got this barrier up i respect that i get it that's something that they have to work through but like i explained to them this is energy i my energy body work is about how to help you to elevate to your higher self and also to help you with flexibility also to help you with you know getting into learning about yourself it's a study for you it's meditative when you're getting a bodywork session from me, you're being you're in meditation. You're just you're just losing yourself and feeling something that you've never felt before. This is one of the reasons why I am so 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 um, much in, in, uh, an advocate for making sure that you understand the power of not losing um, yourself to just being absent of being human is because it's essential that we get to the point of realizing I really do need this for me. We got to stop thinking that it's wrong or whatever you got in your mind about what sex is or whatever you got going on in your mind. Let it go. Sexual energy is a is a is a, is a reason it's here. Let let me just put that out here. We were by human design when we ended up becoming, or I guess when we ended up going through puberty, it was not by our own will. It is in our human design, period. We had nothing to do with being uh, women and then developing breasts and then menstruation and all of that. We had nothing to do with that. We woke up one day and was like, what is this? Our moms had to sit us down and tell us what it is and this is what it is. And then our, our, our boys, the dads had to pull them to the side and explain to them, well, this is what's going on with you and your body. All of those things happened not because of anything of that we had to do with. It's by our human design that we had that. So we have it as a gift. 
We've been gifted our sexuality. We've been gifted to be able to do this. And when we hold back or we get, get all into, I don't want to do it, or I, it's too complicated, or people I deal with is this and that, it's like then you need to change who you are inter, interacting with, who you're making love connections with. You need, to, you need to be honest with you. It's you. It's not that you shouldn't be doing it at all. It just means you need to get a little more particular about who you are being in that space with. And then being crystal clear about what your needs are. A lot of us don't know what our needs are. We have no idea. We don't know what we need in that space. We don't know what we need sexually. We don't know how often we need it. We don't know what we need while we're in there. We don't know who we need. We don't know none of those things. And so when we are unaware of those things, what happens is we get to a space of giving up and just saying to hell with it. I'm not going to do this. And then we can get into a space where, oh, I'm so holier than thou because I'm not. It's like, what does that mean? Because you have been gifted this intimacy and you've been gifted to be in a space of sexuality so that you can be more creative. Don't get on your high horse thinking you're great because you're not indulging. That's not realistic. I'm just being honest. It's your human design to be this. But as I said before, again, when we sit down and we really pay attention to what it does for our life, we will step back and say, you know what? I really am supposed to be, you know, in a space where I can lose myself. Three major places that you can do that is energy body work that I do. You can be in it in meditation and during sex. Those are three major ways you can get to a space of just losing yourself and getting meditative and getting in sync and getting creative. Those three ways is one of the greatest ways to find yourself in your self-confidence, in your sexual confidence. You can even improve your sexual skill the more sex you have. <laughs> you can get better with it. You feel what I'm saying? And, and if you're improving on your skill, guess what happens to your confidence? That goes up. Guess what happens with your experiences? The more you bring and deliver in the intimacy, the more that person is going to be like, wow, I'm kidding I'm getting something I'm not getting anywhere else. Then that means you have a certain level of delivery. I'm just saying. And when you have that, you're getting a powerful, joyful experience and you're getting a powerful, enjoyable state of higher self. And you're going to find yourself more euphoric. You don't have to be on drugs. Because you're fi you're finding yourself higher the more orgasms you have and you are and you are releasing all of the hesitancy or the vulnerability or whatever you've got going on when you start to releasing that you start to feel yourself get more confident that's because we hold back and women know what I'm talking about we hold back having sexual and we hold back having orgasms because we don't want to uh manage our emotions but you have to you have to manage your emotions point blank period if you don't guess what's going to happen <laughs> you're going to feel so frustrated so so kevin i love that you're bringing his, this up he says intimacy is scary because he fears being vulnerable with a woman plus hang-ups that his grandmother taught him about not using women for sex, so he's abstained from sex altogether. Okay, Kevin, I'm so glad that you're here. You are not here by mistake. So, um, you have been gifted. I just said this earlier, but I'm going to say it again. You have been gifted a powerful gift of intimacy. You're not using a woman when you're sexing a woman. Let me just put that, put you up on game with that. When you're in an intimate space with a woman and you are both there willingly, that means that it's just not about you. 
It's about the you and her. So sex is a fluid that that I always have an issue personally with um, even women's mindset thinking that sex is all for the man or a man feeling like I, you know, I get all the joy. That's not true. Sexually confident women and, and women that are orgasmic, we're getting something with sex. We're getting some joy from it. Trust me. <laughs> We're not just laying there. We're enjoying being in that space with you. So I get that you have had some teachings that has taught you that sex is not okay. These are things that you want to start to unlearn. Because you have been gifted. Your power of being sexual has been gifted to you by your human design. Regardless of what your grandmother told you you were gifted sex for you to be able to move in this life at your highest power the more sexual you are as a man the higher your power is holding back being sexual with a woman is not helping you <laughs> you need to get to that space of being vulnerable men I'm telling you right now make sure you share this video Men, you must realize your best power is your vulnerability. You're stronger as a man being vulnerable than you are out here being angry. Showing how big and bad you are. That is not power. That is not, that is not strength, men. You are strong men when you are vulnerable. When you are like, babe, I, I'm uncomfortable here because I've been told I shouldn't be getting it in with you. That woman's going to be like, what? Who told you that? <laughs> That's not true. I'm here because you and I both are in agreement. We should be here in this space together. And if that's the case, let's, let's enjoy each other. Let's just start with, with, with just a real calm cool caress first let's baby step into this shit and then let's get it in there's no reason why we're hesitating to be sexual again i don't know how you're not and, and kevin i'm so thankful you were honest this is ladies i want y'all to pay attention to this because i've had this conversation on a multitude of, of of cases that i've had to tell men it is okay to be sexual men are concerned about this this is not a rare conversation for me. I know it might be a surprise to the ladies on here, but ladies, I do this talking to men always, often, that they are hesitant because they've been taught it's wrong to even masturbate. It's wrong to enter into a woman. It's wrong to be sexual. It's, long, it's wrong to ejaculate. All this stuff is crazy and you've been given this gift to, to be able to enjoy life. <laughs> Do you guys realize that this is a life benefit? Do you guys realize life is better, more colorful, more joyful, more exciting, more euphoric when you're sexual? You are holding back you enjoying something that you could be having in engagement with a woman. You're holding yourself back from that. I understand that you've been taught certain things, but it comes a time when you've got to be like, that was wrong. And that may be something limited to beliefs or religion or whatever. That's fine. I understand that. No disrespect. But a lot of things we got to sit down and look at. What does the real law say? I'm talking about this, the actual laws of the universe. What is that saying? <laughs> Some of our stuff we're holding on to is beliefs. We got to let this stuff go. These beliefs are holding us back from being our supreme self, our higher self. We got to stop being worried about what other people think. We got to quit being concerned about how we're not going to be okay if we're opening up ourselves sexually. Yes, religion does have a lot to do with our beliefs. Absolutely. Yes. However, let me just say, we also have to study outside of what our beliefs are so we can open our own personal awareness i say all the time if you're married to a belief i don't care what it is 
I study all kinds of religions. I study everything. I don't, I don't hold back my limited scope of thought. I've been in church for years. I've done all of that. And then I've, I've been into, um, learning about metaphysics. I've learned about the Jewish religion, Islamic religion. I've done it all. I have made sure to advance my mindset so that I'm not limited because when we get limited, we can't see past the belief we're in. And then we sit back and we're thinking, oh my God, if I indulge in this, I'm not going to be right. Says who? You were given your sexual energy. You were given your sexual, you know, drive so that you could be in this life enjoying it. <laughs> That doesn't make any sense. You were gifted that and no one had anything to do with it. It is in your human design. You were born with it. Your puberty brought you to your sexual self. That has nothing to do with your own personal will or anything. It is in your human design. Period. Trust me. So I want you guys to understand that when you get past worrying about what other people think and start to sit down and really look at what you need, you'll start to advance. You'll start to advance your mindset. We have to get away from being so married to stuff. We're married to certain things and it's not helping us at all. When you hold back men, your sexual energy, guess what you're doing? Your sexual energy isn't just for you. <laughs> You're supposed to be gifting it to a woman. Please, Kevin, I want you to go out and really read and study about sexual energy. I want you to read and study what benefits it is for a man to have sex. There are certain things about your prostate that is very important for you to be releasing yourself in ejaculation, not just through masturbation, but you need a female, a woman's secretion on your penis. This is stuff you should be really studying and learning about. Because you, your health is also impacted when you're not intimate with a woman. Period. You will learn something powerful about what a woman's vaginal secretion will do for you. <laughs> you will realize your masculine Energy will be so highly empowered when a woman is all over you and making love to you. That is important for you to know. Do your research. You need to start going on a research conquest to learn everything you want to know about your sexual life. You can go on my, on my YouTube channel. It's called Carla Nicole Wisdom Channel. I have a whole playlist of sexual information you can go on that for starters and just watch everything you want to watch on there you can watch it and pay attention it's called centrally speaking it's a whole playlist you can just go what back to back to back to back to back and watch all those videos and learn something about what a woman's vaginal secretion can do for you as a man and then when you're having sex with a woman it's very important that you are excreting all of your semen, not just a little bit, but is she moving that prostate to where you're ejaculating a, a lot of your semen, not just a drop here and a drop there, just to where you feel uh, enough has come out. You need to get it all out because when you don't, what happens is you start to get an enlarged prostate as you age as a man. Sex has been give, gifted to us so that we can truly advance in this life. Enjoy our life. Women get so many benefits from semen from men. Period. And if ladies, you're not aware, y'all need to go and do y'all's research on what sex does for you. What it does for your skin. What it does for your glow. What it does for your confidence what it does for how you stay shapely and in shape. It really does a lot of beneficial things for your life, period. So again, I'm not going to be on here much longer, but I just want you to know and understand, man, this is so imperative and important. Kevin, please go out and do what I ask you. 
because it will you will find out that your hesitance your vulnerability is so that is one of the most handsome things i know for me a man that's vulnerable a man that's uh sincere in his spirit those two attributes that a man has that is very attractive for me i'm very attracted to men that are vulnerable rather than a bully rather than all this boisterous you know uh so-called strength he's showing but he's weak i would much rather a man be vulnerable to me than a man to be all this extra doing the most uh, it, it's not attractive for me so i'm just i'm just putting you up on game if you if you really believe these things that you're saying and you're abstaining from intimacy you're holding back your magic that you have been gifted to do i promise you you're you're, you're really doing yourself a disservice yes kevin please do your research you're gonna find out man i've been holding back all this and now give yourself permission to learn yourself and learn how to be in the right space with the right type of woman and make sure you're not picking a woman that is just as, I would say, inexperienced as you. You want a woman that knows what she's doing. <laughs> I'm just going to be honest with you. You're going to want a woman that's sexually confident, like I'm talking about right here. You want a woman to know what she's doing because you haven't been touched in a while. So you want a woman to bring you to a higher level of an orgasmic space because once you get that you're gonna feel like an amazing man you're gonna feel like you're on the top of the world this is what you need and 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 another thing too it is essential for your life you are holding back a lot of you when you should be gifting a lot of you to to these women out here and there's women out here that don't have anybody they're struggling they're alone they don't have nothing See what I'm saying? You've been divorced 15 years and you have not allowed yourself to open yourself up to another woman. And I'm not going to, I'm sure we could probably talk off, off the, off the call, but I'm sure it has a lot to do with hurt. Men love different. Like, can I just say that? Let me take a sip on that. Men love differently. I will say, and I usually don't say this on the record, but I am today. Men love deeper. men love deep because when you put yourself in a marriage in a marital bond with a woman you're nine times out of ten making sure certain things are in place for her that she doesn't even think about in, in, in her own right so a lot of times you're you're putting your soul your health and everything else on the back burner to make sure she has everything she needs so when you're in a marital bond or bind should i say legal bind with a woman men love different and when they lose that they're at a loss they don't know what to do they're unsure they're not they're not aware of the fact that there is love after divorce you just got to make it happen there's love after divorce there is there there there's there's a newfound way to, to which you can do this and feel like okay in your sexuality and again you'll you'll start to realize that i don't know what i was thinking that i <laughs> that i held back you know even just connecting and finding yourself more open to um engaging with women engaging with females because it's not hard but it, it it does come a point where when you do have a loss in a in a relational bond um we got to look forward and project now men you guys men as men men normally project forward you guys are usually the ones that plan forward you guys usually look at things from a longer span women are just into the right now men are looking for five ten years from now this is what we're, we're projecting this is what we're thinking about this is what we're focusing on so men you guys focus on that women we think about stuff right here so men if you do lose a love affair you have to now start to 
put your plate, put your, your things in place to start figuring out what the next woman is going to be. And who is she going to be? And then you have to be the masculine version of you to your high. You got to push yourself to your elevate you to the highest level of who you are. And in that pushing of your elevation, you now become what a woman that you desire is going to attract to. You got to learn the smile mantra. If you haven't done that yet, you need to get my book, Smile Mantra. The smile mantra means, did you smile? Did you study? Did you meditate? Did you inspire others? Are you laughing enough? Are you elevated? These are all steps to getting a woman that you desire to attract to you. Because the attraction will happen. It just comes to a point where you have to start loving on you. Stop allowing beliefs to, to keep you captive. In the thinking that you can't share a sexual space with a woman. And then here's the other thing. I know y'all men don't tell me this, but I'm just going to put it out there. I know men, you guys get hesitant about being with women sexually because you're concerned about those feelings that comes with that. <laughs> what does it mean if I start sexing you real good and we making all this love and stuff? What does it mean? How much is this going to cost me? I know. How much is this going to cost me? I'm laying it down. I'm putting it in. I'm doing all this work. How much is this going to cost me by doing and engaging in this space with you? Is it going to cost me a lot? And I'm not talking about financially. Is it going to cost me time? Is it going to cost me headache? Is it going to cost me frustration? Are we going to be arguing all the time? I just want to be intimate with you and enjoy you and not have all the extra that comes with it. Well, you have to make sure, gentlemen... When you're choosing a partner that you want to be sexual in that sexual space with, you have to make sure you get with a woman that's emotionally stable. That is emotionally stable. That can manage her own emotions. If a woman cannot manage her own emotions, guess what happens? You start sexing her real good, she's going to go all over the place. And you're going to be like, what is this? You feel what I'm saying? So that's important. You said you romanticized that until you have set, obsessed over what type of woman and future wife, etc. Family trips, etc. Like what you've seen in the movies, etc. Right. That's not real, Kevin. All of that that you're talking about is not real. So I want you to... I want you to... Become a realist when it comes to this love love stuff. Um, first off, you want to sit down and think about what you need. And what do you need from a woman? I'm not just talking about sexually here. I'm just talking about what do you need from a woman? A lot of times women don't know what you need because they haven't done enough self-work. Do your self-work for yourself. What do you need from a, from a partner? What do you need? How often are you masturbating? That's important because you need to know how often you are sexually aroused. Because this is where it comes, this is where it gets complicated. Most women that you come in contact with won't know what your sexual needs are until she's in there with you. So if you know how often you're sexually moved because of your masturbation and how often you're masturbating, you know that, well, man, I do it like maybe two to three times a day or I'm, I'm sexually moved one to three times a week or I'm sexually moved whatever your time frame is that you're finding yourself sexually aroused well I'm really aroused in the morning or right before bed whatever it is you need to know that because you need to know well the sexual partner or partners depending on if you're into more than one woman you need to know what you need sexually period you need to know that so that you can express to the person or women that you're involved with, you need to know what you're going to tell her that you need. As a man, you'll get what you need when you tell someone what it is you need. We can't be playing guessing games when we're trying to be in a partnership with someone. We got to be real open and honest and not make the waters murky, be clear, crystal clear about what it is we need. Period. 
what is it that drives you sexually? What moves you? Not about what the movies are telling you. You. You are who matters in this next stage of your sexual life. You need to be the one, the headhunter of what you want to be in it. And then the women that, or woman that comes in your life, in order for her to match that, she has to be clear as to what you need. And then she has to be open and honest with you. Well, I need it about this, or I need it about that time. But once, what people don't understand is when you have not had sex for a long time, you desensitize sexually. You desensitize needing it. But once you start to get it again, you're going to find yourself activating a newfound energy that you have had laid dormant for a long time. So even though you may masturbate maybe two to three times a day, you may want it four to, t four to five times a day in the beginning because you haven't had it for so long. So now you, you're playing catch up. Because you have had a dormant sexual energy for a long time. So this way you can start to feel like, oh my God, I'm, I'm finding myself more into this woman because she's bringing you the pleasure. She's bringing you to orgasm. And so this is why it's imperative, F the movies, F, what you, F all that. You got to know what you need. This is specifically individually based on what you need, period. And then that way, when you come into your partnership or whatever, you'll find out, okay, this is what I need. This is how, this is how it's going to be. This is how I'm being moved. This is how I'm finding that um, I'm more enjoyed with it, enjoyed with what I have going on. It's not going to be about fantasy. It's going to be about reality. Make sure you share this video. Kevin, if you want to go offline and you need coaching or something, just go to my website. Book me. Smileandsip.com. Just book me and we can have a very deep dive conversation about how to now stair step yourself back into your sexual life. Stair step yourself into your highest being because you're holding yourself back not being sexual I, I'm just saying I appreciate everybody that joined on here this afternoon or this morning <laughs> the afternoon this morning um, and again I'll put the book in here I'll put the link to go to to, to get your um, session with me because yeah you can't afford to just holding yourself back you deserve so much more in this life while we're here all right, I'm out of here, guys. It's Carla Nicole. I'm signing off. Best kept.